Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with mysticgenmara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And I would like to introduce you, do a little book review to, um, <laughs> a, I've talked about Silver Raven Wolf before. She is quite the eclectic, amazing Wiccan. Um, but she did a book many, many years ago called The Ultimate Book of Shadows for the New Generation Solitary Witch. It's this behemoth. <laughs> but it is a very hefty book. Uh, it's published by Llewellyn Publishing. It's got a total of 590 pages. This, if you're new to Wicca or you're new to kind of a pagan path, this kid right here is worth worth picking up. Um, it breaks everything down into different sections, which are super handy to... <laughs> Kind of get figure out where you want to go with it because not everyone wants to do the same things she has it set up so it's uh shadows of religion and mysteries and she talks about shadows because not everyone's okay with being open or public about such things so you work in the shadows so part one is shadows of religion and mystery part two is shadows of objects and tools part three is shadows of expertise and proficiency uh, four is magic and enchantments, and then five is shadows of magic and real life. So, the thing with this one is it is kind of an all-in-one grimoire. This is from some of her work with her covens. Um, she is a Gardenian line witch, so if you haven't heard of Gerald Gardner, I've done videos about him. And she comes down through a gentleman called, I believe she was either initiated by Raymond Buckland or was trained she was trained by him in some of the stuff but she cut that's where her line is she's gotten really big into um, hoodoo and Dutch um, mysticism here in the last few years which is kind of fun because it's all about poppets and <laughs> the Dutch hexagrams that you can see on a lot of the Pennsylvania uh, barns the big circles with the different symbols and emblems in them they're super super cool but this one, in the first section, back to the <laughs> point of this, in the first section they talk about what it means to actually practice the spiritual practice, the religious aspect, if you will, of Wicca. And she has it set up so that you can do it by yourself, you can do it with a small group, it doesn't have to be through a line, and that's one thing that she does talk about, but it's, she really wants you to focus on the meditations the connection to God, Source, Divine, because in her tradition and what I've seen from Gardenians who are from the original <laughs> Gerald's line, the, the whole purpose is a connection back to nature through the goddess and the god. It's not meant to be, oh look, I'm a, <laughs> I stand out from the crowd and I'm this. It's actually very much a spiritual practice and that's what she brings back to it, which I really appreciate she talks about like triple the triple exercises the triple deity exercises uh, there's a creation story in here that is really cool it's long uh, starts on page 19 and goes to page 22 but when I say pages we're talking gigantic pages and that's the script so it's a fairly long story which is cool but she goes into the different um, the sabbats, which are your ritual structures for the moons, um, which are a little bit different than the sabbat by itself. And a sabbat is just kind of your monthly setup that you do. She goes through instructions on how, how to set up a basic altar, the different moons and what they mean, which is really good if you're <laughs> like me and struggle with astrology. Um, but she goes through and breaks it down so you can see the most for example Taurus the energy is stability peace affection responsiveness saving artistic ability devotion and harmony the zodiac color for Taurus is the red orange color um, the element of Taurus is earth there's secondary ones but that's the primary there's suggested uh, operations you can do being that she's a Wiccan or a witch whichever you want to call it she focuses on calling them magic because in reality it is because you're cha creating change in conformance with will that's the core tenet of magic 
is being able to do something that is strictly based off the energy of the will. It's not so much the physical world. Um, then she goes into during the Taurus season, what to avoid, which for Taurus is missing a good opportunity, um, and things to be careful of during Taurus. Um, and if you've ever met a Taurus, this is one that they all are really good at that they need to be careful of, and that is uh, being stubborn. Something to always pay attention to if you work with a Taurus is <laughs> they're a little bullheaded because their symbol is the bull for a reason. But she breaks all this stuff down in the first part. There's different pantheons of different deities, Greek, Roman, Celtic, Norse, Germanic. Celtic and Norse Germanic are not always the same. Um, Egyptian. And then she breaks down where the god and goddess concepts come from. Come from. And then we get into, if you are with a group, how to focus a group to achieve a goal. Which if you're in a coven of circle of some form you tend to be trained that as part of your training uh, where the high priestess and high priest get everyone's attention and they can help everyone focus on one thing and it helps keep everyone attuned so she talks about how to do that even with a small group then she breaks it down um, we're still in the spiritual part of this into the calling of quarters the different rites of passages that go through life um, she even has some little rituals in here for self-initiation which are a little bit different than what you would think because it's not just I devote myself to it there's more to it so it actually causes a um, shift in your awareness and it's not like oh it's gonna change your entire world but it changes how you feel when you do these types of initiations it's not it's not just words these are actual communications that you're making with the divine, however you see that. And so it does change how you show up when you are doing some of this. She goes through some solitary um, a sabbat rituals. Uh, then she goes through like Yule sabbat, the winter solstice, which is Yule. Uh, she breaks down what those different things mean, the different ways you can work within that um, sabbat, different meanings, different ways of viewing what those sabbats can bring in sorry uh, and she talks about let's say like Beltane there's other names for it Beltane is the most common one especially here in the West the approximate date which if you're going by traditional calendar dates it's May 1st but she also tells you if you're going by astrology it is when the Sun is at 15 degrees Taurus Okay, I don't do astrology, so <laughs> I do May 1st. Um, she goes from the meanings of the words, the different ritual focuses. Like for Beltane, it's the appearance of the matured horned god, fertility, protection of animals and gardens. You leap the fire for fortunate summers and, of course, love magic. Uh, and then we go into how old the holiday has historically been seen. And Beltane or May Day, depending on who you talk to, is according to her and some other resources I've read one of the oldest if not the oldest continuously celebrated of the original Sabbaths there's not really like a source to well it popped up around this time some of the other ones do have that but Beltane has been celebrated that time period for thousands of years you could say I'm not a scholar in that respect so I don't know <laughs> uh, the popular myths around it are dancing the maypole there is a little bit of a link to some celtic stuff as well she talks about that um, the planetary rulers which i thought was kind of cool when i first started into this uh, with the holiday which would beltane would be venus of course it would be love and romance and amorous activities but then she talks about different invocations you can do for each one um, ideas to help adjust to build to make the holiday your own and then she, you know, it's kind of fun. Talks about different seeker ceremonies, which are ways to help you find, um, find your path. Because not everyone's just gonna walk into it and be like, "This is where I'm going to be." Usually, you walk into it and it's like, eh, "I'll take this and I'll take this and I'll take that," but all of it to get now, I'm gonna take these pieces and I'm gonna go over here. So, she talks about how you can build your own, and it's actually really helpful in that respect. 
She talks about your secrets to success, and again, this is all just in part one. So let's hop over to part two with the objects and tools. Uh, everyone knows your standard, <laughs> well not everyone, your standard Wiccan tools, the chalice, the pentacle, the sword, or the wand, or the sword, or the athame, and then the wand. Those are the base four. But she talks about your altars and how to design them, which is really super fun when you have the time and <laughs> space to set one up. Um, what to have on an altar, she gives a demonstration of what all she has. She has like the besom broom, the wand, incense, multiple candles, uh, images for the deity, your chalice, your book of shadows, which is a unique book, uh, your salt, your water, the offering of crackers or bread, and then there's also some like waste containers because usually when you have burning stuff you have something you need to <laughs> you have to put it somewhere. Uh, she talks about how to cleanse your altars, the different cloths, if you choose to use them. Um, and I have to say, I like how she thinks about some of this because you have your altar and everything in her for cleanliness and orderliness, sometimes for secrecy too. You want to keep all of your altar supplies in this shoebox or this uh, locker at the end of your bed. So not everyone has to see it. Like you don't have to leave your altar up all the time. You can which when I had the space to do it, I did. <laughs> but it's not necessary, and that's what she emphasizes. And when you're in certain situations, your book of shadows or even just a, a book like this can become a temporary altar, and she talks about how that can work as well. And those are super simple things, but it's stuff that you don't usually think about. So it can be very important different deities you can talk to, how to make poppets, what witches' bottles are for protection. She goes through all of that stuff, and then we hop into section three. And that is the expertise and proficiency. This is where you get into the, once you've kind of gotten the meditations down and you're starting to understand what a circle means, what it means to practice rituals, what it means to talk to divinity, what it means to do candle magic, if you will. Um, then you get into how do you refine this? How do you bring it into a much tighter circle so your manifestations occur faster? And then what do you do to help you improve as a person, as a soul, as a spiritual being moving through the planet? Um, she talks about different ways to do affirmations, positive thinking, which a lot of the times is just repeating a similar, a simple affirmation until it clicks in. Um, and in this third part, she also talks about your animal totems. We hear a little bit about that in the metaphysical, but there's very specific associations historically and occult um, oriented. And she brings a fair amount of them. There's like well, three pages or so of these, like starfish you're working towards your desires and regeneration uh the moth sending and receiving messages we have kangaroos forward movement because they don't usually move backwards very well <laughs> so you've got these different attributes like a uh, chipmunk finding treasure in the earth you're working for your future and these can be spirit guides that come through like as a permanent thing or it can be when you're dreaming when you're in meditation you keep having this one image pop up she talks about how these can apply and how it can actually help you figure out what it is is going on in your life. Uh, she talks about the mythical beasts and how <laughs> they might be mythical now, but they may not have been in the past. Um, and then she gets into the inner planets versus the outer planets, what it all means, how it applies to us and the influences that come in. And like I said, this it's a big book. It's got a lot of good stuff in it. Uh, she talks about how to do invocations to planets, which, unless you're really interested in astrology, uh, that's probably not too much of a <laughs> thing for you. She is really into r Silver Is, and I, I, like I said, I can respect it, the planetary hours of a day. And there's a section that talks about that in here as well, the different aspects of the moon, what it means, how to use it. Uh, when we talk about the hours within the planets it's interesting how it plays out because your hour is not a 60 minute hour ever in those respects and she talks about how to break it down how to do the exercises 
and it gives you an entirely different way to apply that to manifestation work, to meditation work, to uh, magic if you're doing like candle magic or something. It really gives you a different way to focus. And sometimes if you're doing, say you're working for love, but you're working in, let's say, energy of Scorpio, that hour of Scorpio, it's not going to work out so well for you because Scorpio is a little more aggressive than necessary for love magic. And that's where knowing what those, what time of the day can give it a little bit of a boost. It can also push back a little bit if you're doing the wrong stuff in the wrong hour. Does it mean it's not going to work? Absolutely not, because the will and the focus and attention of the person doing the ritual is the primary source of all of this manifestation. But if you're going to do it, give yourself a little extra oomph from the planets, and that's what she's talking about. She also talks about how to feel and sense the auras, how to strengthen yours to keep the unwanted stuff off, out, and away. Um, and then we get into like divination tools. And, you know, the common one, because I talk about it on here a lot, we have tarot, we've got I Ching, we have the runes, but that's three of like, I don't know, 20 ish or so, because you've got. I think it's bibliomancy where you use books, just random books, to find answers. You can use pendulums for dowsing. You can use dowsing rods to douse questions and answers. There's crystals. There's uh, crystal grids. There's all sorts of ways to do different divinations. And she kind of goes through some of that, including scrying, which is uh, a little more tricky than people think. Using a crystal ball or a bowl of ink is a good way to, to practice those. Um, she talks about recalling your dreams. There's just a ton of really good information. And if you can only imagine, I've been, I don't know if you can see that. Whoops, there we go. There's bookmarks. There is, and I, <laughs> this was one of those things where I was trying not to have 10,000 little tabs sticking out. So there's a couple of itty bitty dog ears in here. And I feel bad about that because I don't usually do that to books. Um, let's hop ahead to part four. Like I said, there's just a ton of really good information. She talks a whole bunch about the tarot, breaks it down as to what the major and minor arcanas are. She goes through a couple of basic spreads just to give you an idea, like the Celtic crosses in here. There's the planetary card spread. This is a traditional spread. And then she also talks about the Roman antiquity house spread, which using the 12 houses and what the different cards mean in different houses. Um, okay, bouncing head section four <laughs> we have magic and enchantment so in this section we are really getting into just the, the magical part of things what alchemy means how to get a basic understanding of that alchemy by itself is a lifelong pursuit it's not something you're going to learn in a month a year or even five years it is a complex it is extremely intensive and it's not just meditating to change an energy there's a physical practice with alchemy and they both need to be practiced to be practicing in my opinion true alchemy it just the spiritual side okay that's nice that's meditation exercise just the physical size side you're practicing chemistry bringing those two together is in my opinion the only way to practice true alchemy but she talks about how to do that and she goes through and gives <laughs> brief descriptions of some of the symbols there is so much there that you can only do a brief description unless you could sit down and go through the process of actually understanding them and it's not easy <laughs> but she talks about the emerald tablet as, as above so below how to manifest through meditation astral projection and a astral protection because unlike some people and i'm not i don't i'm not poking names but the reality of working in the spiritual world is you have light and you have dark these are opposite ends of a spectrum and when you start reaching into the astral the astral plane is a highway it is just a place to travel you're not learning things there it is a travel location which means there's angels and there's you can call them demons if you will they could be negative egregores. There's a whole bunch of stuff out there. But 
when you're going, how to protect yourself when you astral project, how to protect yourself from whatever's roaming around out there. It's not as simple as, I'm just going to think beautiful thoughts that that's not how this works. <laughs> and that's why when people drag things home and then they can't figure out why they're so having a, this pain or that stress or whatever, it's because they brought something with them when they were out there. So she talks about how to deal with that. Um, there's some banishings and some bindings. She talks about to kind of chase that stuff away, um, how to use the catechist properly. Then she gets into kind of a grimoire t or a book of shadows type thing. Where we talk about the elements, the colors, new, a little bit of numerology, not a lot, because again, that <laughs> has its own headaches. Um, she talks about how to use the different uh, pentagram stars, how what the different symbols are, Mercury and uh, meditations with air, with different tools. Uh, where are we at here? Top ahead. How to work with the elements together, which not. You usually will learn that in a coven, and there are some books out there that will go through it, but most of the time they're focusing on, like, this is how you work with air, and this is how you work with water. She's like, learn them individually, and then you will actually come to an understanding of how to work with them together, and that's kind of a cool concept, but she brings that forward, um, goes through different manifestation exercises, um, blessing house plants, which is kind of fun, farming by the almanac, not sure how many people know this but if you plant and harvest based on what the moon is doing talking to different planets you're gonna have a much more successful harvest and you can do just a general Harris Farmers Almanac or you know that type to get a basic level but then she tells about what in this section here it's on page 428 she talks about when to do apple trees, beans, gourds. She's broken it down because she grows so much stuff of her own. Um, I don't know, she's just an amazing person. I would love to actually get the chance to meet her one day. Uh, she talks about general gardening rules, which adding a little bit of woo-woo to it helps, you know, different gems and stones and how to use them. And from experience, I can't remember if I learned it here or not, but you can plant different herbs in, in your side of your home and she talks about the different crystals. Well, the crystals can match the, the herbs you're growing and actually enhance the magical or healing properties. So some little tidbit there you could take with you. Uh, she talks about how to get more success in your different practices. And so much of it is how you approach the situation. When you approach it with negativity, if you approach it with doubt or fear, your chance of success is close to zero just simple facts so it's if you're not in a situation where you're like okay I can do this then take a breath meditate a little bit get yourself more grounded and then move on to the rest of it <laughs> uh, then the last section part five is magic and real life uh, and we're talking like genuine real life there is an acne removal spell there is how to deal with anger and conflict spells Let's see what else we got in the military she's got a little section for how to do military shrines or military practices because you you know generally want to keep that pretty quiet but if you're a family member of a military this there's also a little section here talking about that because I believe one of her daughters ended up in the military joined the military so she has that one's actually a little closer to her heart than <laughs> I, I realized when I first read this uh, different ways to work with different beauty spells how to deal with bullies and you know ruthless stuff attracting good friends attracting romantic partners we're not talking hookups she's actually meaning like long-term type things um, there's even stuff in here about how to uh, buy a car protect your home apartment if you're still in school dorm rooms um, how to deal with jails and detention centers if you know oopses happen there's a lot of just really awesome information, including a full section back here about money <laughs> and how to acquire it. <laughs> um, there's different things in here about, uh, you know, safe sex and dealing with some of the more controversial topics, the more stressful topics, things like an aliving self. Um, she talks a little bit about this, and she also talks, and there's a section in here talking, where are we at here, page... Do, 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 do. 
it starts on page 548 in this version um, the unaliving part and she also talks about how to deal with death so this book actually and it's not this is not therapeutic it's not like do this instead it's more of help you understand when stuff like this happens and also she gives some tips and a lot of phone numbers uh, on how to notice the signs what to be paying attention for if someone starts acting a little different and she's not saying intervene but there's options you have available to you and if a death has occurred and you're kind of struggling with it because grief is not easy she does talk a bit about that as well just kind of giving you more of an idea of what that side of spirituality is and how to work your spirituality to help you understand the process it's a process we all go through it it's not like one person's more special than others but she wants to bring everything full circle with what she does and that's a, that's a part of life unfortunately she also talks a lot about um war and how to you're not going to go fight things protesting for war you're protesting if you protest for peace you're actually protesting peace itself is how she kind of talks about it so it's things like you're actually looking to support peace you're meditating on how to be at peace and she goes through ways to deal with that and how to focus that in for a much better uh, outcome versus railing against it it's more of how can you support the thing that's going to stop that so she's really more into not so much pacifism but it's a lot more focused on doing the things for the right reasons and with the proper focus because when you work against something in every aspect you're actually working to support the continuation of it when you're working to support the opposite you weaken the thing that you don't want and that's what she focuses on with some of those more serious topics but overall if you are new to this path you're kind of looking for an all-in-one that kind of lays things out so it's a little bit easier step by step to understand this is a good book for that it has a ton of good information it's written by an author that I personally really super respect she has a lot of good information in here and if you're curious as to her sources she does put a bibliography in the back so you can check out um, like five pages of bibliography it starts on page 571 goes through to 574 so yeah about five solid pages and like I said it's just a really awesome book it was one of the first ones that I picked up and it you'll take it to it however deep you want to take it that's the key to anything like this but yeah if you're interested check this book out it is an awesome resource if you're already practicing and you're just kind of looking to expand a little bit this is another good resource and like I said she was trained through the Gardenian line she is the elder in the Black Forest clan yeah she is the Wiccan high priestess and clan head of the Black Forest family that includes 28 covens around North America so she's she's got some <laughs> got a little bit of knowledge and just a hair bit of clout within the pagan community so she's worth checking out just for that but I will wrap this up. I hope you guys have a great rest of your evening, day, week, and I will see you in the next video.